The Cave Series, Part 2, written by Darkly Gathers. I'm not sure if Jamie sees the dark shape moving about in the water behind him. What he does see, however, is the panic writ across the faces of his team up on the ledge, illuminated eerily in the flickering of their torches. He starts to swear and curse, taking in mouthfuls of cave water as he pushes himself through the rocky pool at double speed, arms flailing. There is something there, though, in the water, the shadow of something large, obscured by rippling waves thrown out by Jamie's movements. It follows after him, and seems to cast up strange and sparkling lights from its own body, down in the deep. Gazer has reached down at the edge of the rocky drop, hastily knocking a small cluster of stones over the edge as he reaches out an arm. Quick, Jamie! Jamie struggles up onto the bank below, water pouring from the sleeves of his clothes as he half staggers, half crawls towards the steep ledge, reaching up to meet Jamie's grip. The two boys grab each other's wrists, and Darcy and I hold of Gazza. The three of us haul Jamie up and onto the ledge. A look over his shoulder we do. The shape in the water has vanished. The pool reveals nothing but shimmering ripples in the darkness. With a final grunt as we haul the soaking boy up onto the outcrop, he lays there, panting and dripping, as he runs a hand over his face. Thanks for fucking helping, lady, Gazza grunts at Margaret before he's caught his breath. But she isn't even looking at him. She's still staring, wide-eyed down at the pool below. Impossible, she murmurs to herself. There's, there's no way, nothing can live down here. Nothing like that. What the fuck was it, Jamie asks, through breaths, looking between us. Darcy shakes her head. She's gone pale. I don't know. I didn't really see it. I just saw movement, a weird shape. Angela? She turns to me. I grimace anxiously. I don't know, I reply quietly. It was pretty big. Something about it was emitting a little light, too, but I don't know how. All right, screw this, mutters Jamie, reaching down for his radio. He draws it up to his mouth, presses the button on the side, but the radio's LEDs fail to switch on. He tries again, shakes it. Water spills from the holes on the receiver. He swears again. Gather, radio the others. I'm fucking done with this. Um, yeah, about that. I'm afraid I can't, mate, he says, glancing at Margaret. I don't have one. Turns out I did actually forget to grab one after all. He shrugs, and Margaret seems to return to awareness. She glares at him in disbelief. You what? Stupid boy. How could you be so careless? So irresponsible. Darcy sighs. I'll do it. But can we get moving already? We really need to get out of here. If we saw what we think we saw, then we're probably in real danger right now. She lifts the radio up to her mouth and calls for help, briefly but succinctly explaining the situation. The device crackles, but there is no response. She tries again for a second time, but is again met with only silence. Is it on the right channel, I suggest? Margaret suddenly scoffs. We don't have time for this, she says. There is some kind of twisted prank, I presume. Anyone willing to pull such a prank in a place like this is likely very dangerous. Follow me, Let's head right to the rendezvous. That didn't look like much of a prank to me, Margaret, Darcy replies levelly. But the woman brushes it off. Quick now, chop chop. A prank? Surely not. The rational part of my brain wants to believe it. It wants to believe it desperately, but it just can't. Jamie shivers as we fall bitterly back into step. Are you okay, I ask him, and he nods, smiling at me. Yeah, I'm alright. Sorry about all that swearing and stuff. Not usually like that. Oh no, it's all good, honestly. I give an awkward little laugh. No one's ever apologised to me for swearing too much before. It's actually kind of sweet. You can be honest with me, by the way, he says quietly, shooting a look back over his shoulder into the darkness of the cabin behind. Is there anything you're not telling me? There really was something in the water, wasn't there? I nod. Yeah, yeah, there was something there. It looked, I don't know kind of reptilian, I guess. I didn't get a good look, but by the way it was moving, slithering, trailing off, Jamie asked me no more questions. We do start to walk a little faster, however. After ten minutes, the beam of my torch catches an enormous stalactite, far out in the distance of the cavern, surrounded by almost perfect ring of smaller spikes on the shadowy ceiling. Hey, did we... did we pass those stalactites on the way down? We didn't, Darcy says, with certainty she stops. 
Margaret, where are you taking us exactly? This isn't the way we came down. The boys stop moving too, but Margaret doesn't. She doesn't even turn around. I know the route. We're headed right to the rendezvous. Margaret, the rendezvous is back up closer to the entrance. We seem to be going down, says Darcy. I know where we're going, the woman snaps. Have you any idea how many times I've been down into these caves? I'm the last person to get lost. Have a little respect. Hello? There's a fucking monster down here, lady. Gazza shouts suddenly. Is this the way back or fucking not? My name, Margaret replies with a shriek, spinning on the spot and jabbing a finger into Gazza's face, is Margaret. Her final word echoes around the vast and gloomy walls of the cavern. Margaret, we hear, ever fading as it bounces off the rock steadily disappearing into the dark. Silence follows for a few long moments, and then it evaporates, broken by the sound of an opposing hiss. Like a gas leak, and at first, that is what I believe it to be, until suddenly it drops a tone, becoming louder and more throaty. With a shaking hand, Darcy slowly lifts her torch, back the way we came, and I turn to follow the light of the beam. It catches on the edge of something enormous between the rocks, slithering through the cracks, like a living shadow, and snakes away from the light, and the hiss grows louder. It's after us. Margaret gather shouts, grabbing the woman by her shoulders, and with such force their hard hats knock together. The way out. Which is the way out? She stares at him in silence. The edge of hysteria creeps into the group. Margaret's name is shouted several more times, drowning out the sound of the encroaching hiss, until... This way. It's this way, she says, gathering her wits and hastening away between two narrow walls of rock. We follow, jolting and pushing to line, though the crevasse is only big enough for one of us to move, single file, and as fate would have it, I found myself at the back of the procession. We're moving at pace, but it's just not fast enough. We're still going too slowly. Is this what happened to the missing girl? I can't help but to think. To Maisie, lost to the hunger of this monstrosity in the dark. My heart thumps loud in my chest. I spin round and cast the light of my torch back behind me. Beyond the edge of the crack in the wall, I see the rough shape of our pursuer. Ever, just so slightly, creeping and crawling from rock to rock, as one of the dancing shadows is in its approach. Faster, I murmur, with fear, then louder. Please, just hurry as much as you can, I push against Gazza in front of me. Fuck, I'm going as fast as I can, he says. I've never been much for confrontation, but needs must. Move, I shout, forcing him faster as the torchlight catches again on the thing in the shadows. It's getting closer, I can tell. Would it be able to fit down this passageway? I don't want to think about it and to find out. After a terrifying long two minutes, we push out into a wider cave, stumbling over each other, and there's a splash, then another, an exclamation of alarm, and then my foot comes down into a body of dark water, just below knee height. I'm not expecting this drop and I panic, dropping my torch into the water as I slip. I steady myself, then reach down to grab it, shaking it, but already the device's light has started to flicker. We're in a roughly roundish room of slippery stone, sharp spires of ever-eroding rock hang menacingly above overhead and the walls are filled with a number of holes of varying sizes. Some are mere groves, and look only as deep as an arm could reach, and others are tunnels. Black tunnels that lead away into the pitch darkness of their own unknown. Jamie looks around, bewildered. Gazza has his head in his hands. Darcy tries her radio again, and I peer back into the crack through which we clambered. I raise my torch and as it flickers, it catches on a number of monstrous shapes, squeezing its way towards us. A picture of rippling scales and shiny shell, segments that cascade over and onto each other, like the mechanisms of some twisted alien machine. The torchlight flickers again, then cuts out. The view is lost. Guys, I scream, where do we go? You've lied to us, Margaret, says Darcy slowly turning to face the woman that led us here. 
her teeth clenched tight. You don't know where to go, do you? Do you? I, I don't understand, Margaret stutters. I could have sworn on the maps, this area. I swear this area is supposed to lead us eventually back up into the main passage. Maps? Jamie cries out with Gaza repeating. You've only seen this place in maps, he says angrily. I thought you said you'd actually been here. Fuck. Fuck! The hissing grows louder. Scratching and wet scribbling becomes louder at the edge of our hearing. I am hit by a sudden wave of terrible claustrophobia. We're trapped in here. Trapped in this rocky room. I start to feel like the walls are closing in. My breathing becomes shallower. And the water around my legs tricks my brain to thinking I am struggling for air. I hate it. I hate this. How the hell did this happen? If I knew then how much worse my claustrophobia was about to become, I would probably have been taken in the grip of a panic attack right there and then. When the moment came, however, it all happened far too quickly for me to give the situation much mental analysis. Margaret was babbling some nonsense, genuinely flummoxed, or caught in her own arrogant lie. We never find out. It's fucking coming, says Gaza. I can see it. I can see it. What about these tunnels? asked Jamie, the terror evident in his voice. Where do they lead? Margaret, do you know? She doesn't know a damn thing, says Darcy with disdain. And I don't think we have much of a choice. She raises her torch and casts the light over the tunnels closest to the water. They are not large. There's not even enough space to crouch. If we're going through, then we're going to have to crawl. Gaza, Jamie, you two take that one. Angela, you're going to go through this one with me, okay? I can only nod. Margaret, go wherever the hell you want. Margaret pushes past us at once and jumps into a tunnel a little further to the left, muttering to herself. Do they all go to the same place, I ask as she passes? The tunnels. They must do, she shrieks. The map. Screw this, Jamie says. She hasn't got a clue. Girls, good luck. He is hoping we'll see you on the other side, and he pushes hastily through the water and scrabbles into the lowest most tunnel with a splash up from his feet, disappearing quickly into the dark. Gaza follows. Darcy turns to me as the scratching and the hissing grows louder. You go first. It's okay. I'll be right behind you. Darcy, you can do it. Go on, quick. Quick! I do so for her. For her sake. I scrabble into the tunnel on the right. It's dark. So terrifyingly dark. My torch flickers in my hand and lets out a worrying little buzz every time I inadvertently smack it against the rock as part of my hasty crawling. The sound of my breathing increases tenfold. It echoes around and around my head. There's so little space. I can feel all the dark, dank, slimy walls of the tunnel press up against me as I crawl, and ahead... Ahead there is only darkness, 